hear us, and I hope you can hear Lewis. And we have we haven't rehearsed this, so you're going to get a double act that haven't rehearsed. But norm, normally we're quite a good double act. So uh, I'm. No, I'm you're not meant to tell them that. We've rehearsed this tons. This is going to be very professional. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here we go. What, what I'm going to do is that this, this is very much for an international audience. We, we work in a large further education college, which is like a community college in, in, in the States uh, or a TAFE college in, in, in Australia. We do a lot of further and higher education. Uh, and what we're going to tell you really is a, is, is, is a tale of a great development we did and we won. We actually won from a one in competition with a whole lot of universities and things. And we really took quite a simple approach. And we're just going to show you that uh, and give you a walk around the website and the resources and things that we built. Uh, there's a link there you can go. You'll get that later. And that just that's just giving you some more background about, 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 about me. Uh, so in December in 2018, uh, we, won, we won a government tender uh, from Skills Development Scotland and the Scottish Government. And that was to create a skills portal, portal for the National Manufacturing Institute of Scotland. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you a bit about that later. Uh, it's meant to be a distributed centre to train people in higher education and colleges. And we won the bid on the basis that we were going to take a very different approach. We'll build a website or we'll use our VLE or we'll do all of the things that would have made it, made it hard to sustain at the end of the project. Uh, so we took an approach that wasn't about server space. It wasn't about lots of development time. It wasn't about ongoing hosting charges and all of the other traditional charges, all, all the other traditional challenges. Uh, and we really did this because we had a conversation with Google. Uh, and we had a conversation with Google that went along the lines of, if we were a big educational institution, you would give us Google Education for free, wouldn't you? And the answer was yes. So if we were a partnership, if we were a partnership of educational institutions that wanted to share things, would you give us a Google Education account for that partnership? And the answer was yes. And that got us really going. So we could use Google Sites, unlimited, a uh, unlimited band, unlimited storage space behind it, all of the Google tools. Uh, and it gave us a sharing platform that was out with the ballywick of a single institution. And it also means at the end, with a bit of careful jiggery pokery on how we set the domain up and how we communicate with the people that have joined the community, uh, that we can, we can hand the community over as we're going to do to the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland at the end of the project. And they get a whole lot of resources and they get an on, they get a ready built community. Uh, so that's what we did behind the scenes. But what we did to justify what we were doing uh, was we wrote a paper that identified we wrote a paper that identified uh, the digital skill frameworks for colleges and for universities and for work-based learning. What what had been identified is they could build a centre, but lecturers in universities and colleges uh, and in the workplace don't have the digital skills. To share things, so this was all about building building digital skills to share stuff. Uh, we identified five interventions. We already had we already had a professional development award in the college, so we took these materials and we repurposed them. And we made them open materials. And we pushed them out the way, uh, and we delivered it all through a series of webinars and teach me so webinars and face to face. And importantly, we used technology that everybody could access. So we used Zoom meeting. Google, Google Slides, all of, the, all, all of the tools that were open and flexible so that not only were we giving things away, we were also creating a model that was sustainable that other people could pick up uh, no matter where they were. Uh, the deliverables, we delivered them all, 50 ambassadors, 200 staff engaged across Scotland. We, we actually blew the lid off that. Uh, five strategic interventions. A library of assets to support digital skills, uh, and with that focus around STEM and manufacturing 4.0, uh, and we delivered a program of 50 webinars and and free face-to-face -face, uh, events to engage staff. Uh, uh, the progress was quite steady. We identified all the stakeholders. We delivered it all on time. 
there was a bit of an extension because while we were doing this, the, the, the further education colleges in Scotland went on strike. So we were meant to have it all delivered by uh, September and it, we stretched the delivery up to December 2019. So there was, a wee, there was a wee hiatus because we couldn't do teach meets or run webinars when everybody was on, 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 on strike. Uh, so that was that was the original timeline, and eventually it was stretched out to December 2019. What I'm, what I'm going to do this, this this really tells that story again about the initial paper and what, what we agreed to do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you in a minute what, what we've done. Uh, we're now handing over to Strathclyde University and the NMIS team. Uh, now it's all been formed, uh, and what we're doing in the background. What we're doing in the background is we're repurposing the assets because we, all the assets are open. We know that other colleagues across the further education sector, particularly now that we've all gone to working remotely, when you see the assets, you'll see why they're relevant. They're all busy repurposing these assets so they can use them within their own within their own training or within their own colleges. Okay. And in the background, that's been really useful, and I think Lewis will concur. We've, we've really done a lot of learning about how to use Zoom, how to deliver webinars, uh, and how to how actually almost more importantly than doing a Zoom webinar, how to cu curate them. Because what we discovered is that lots of people don't come into the webinar, but they do pick up they do pick up some of the videos and some of the assets later. Uh, and on the back of this this model that we've used, we're actually getting lots and lots of other contracts with lots of other organizations in the public sector, educational partnerships that actually want to take this approach to uh, they want they want a quick and easy Google site. Uh, and they also want that bit at the back end where they can store they can store and share lots of assets and, and they can collaborate around a round round a round a Google site. Now, now I'm going to disappear. Lewis, can you share your screen or will I share my screen? Yeah. I'll do it for mine. I should hope that this should work. I just need to okay. get start up my entire share. Hopefully, this should be sharing now. If I go, whoa, yeah. let's get rid of that infinite. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to talk so, people through the site? Yeah. So the, it was all kind of built as uh, resources in um, Google Sites as the kind of front page to store the materials, present them to people. Um, but um, most of the materials are actually sat as either Google Slides or videos. So they're all kind of transportable. So as has happened um, in the last week or so, uh, NMIS is starting to gear up to move things to their own website. So we used to have a lovely URL up here. So ignore this ugly site's URL, which was nmis-skills.org. But that now redirects to their site as they get ready to move things over. But we'll share this URL so you can see this and get access to it. But basically, we've got blurbs about what the actual project is. This was all. Um, mandated to us by effectively the Scottish government of what allows to be on this front page. Um, but we've got lots of useful things. The main core of what we were kind of offering people was our program of, of study effectively, um, which is split into several different sessions and topics. So digital learning design, we established as one of the early topics we wanted to cover uh, because you can't really do digital learning unless you know about the kind of background knowledge behind that, how you should be actually designing your learning to act. You can't just port your lectures into a webinar and you're done. Um, so there's some theory that needs to go on there. Um, online assessment, which is a big hot topic at the moment, obviously, as everyone's trying to figure out how they can assess their students. Add that in there as well. Collaboration, so using collaborative documents. Again, I don't know how good your institutions are on that, but a lot of uh, the people in our institutions and other ones in, in Scotland just aren't used to doing any of this kind of online collaboration. They're so used to saving a Word document, sending it to someone an email, they edit it and then send it back. So really covering some of those fundamentals there for people of how to use a collaborative document, such as a Google Doc or Office 365. Webinars and screencasting, pretty self-explanatory. Using YouTube, again, a lot of people are, aren't familiar with the fact that you can just grab some YouTube videos or if any video site and use that in your learning by turning them to interactive videos with other tools. A lot of people think of video as that I'm going to have to go out there and make my own videos, um, you know, record it, edit it. We wanted to kind of get rid of it, uh, not get rid of, but move away from that idea and show to people, no, there's tons of video content out there. You just need to find it and use it. And we also did a lot on um, 
digital well-being as well, which is another topic that's coming up more and more um, of so the kind of ideas of the, the uh, attention economy, uh, having those notifications on all the time and distracting you. So to kind of give people information on that. So I dip into digital learning design, I can show you what our actual resources look like. So we have recordings of our webinar that links through to our YouTube channel, which I'll just open to show you quite briefly and then hit pause before I annoy everyone. So we put it all on YouTube, so it's all easily available for, whoops, so it's all easily available for everyone. We also have got obviously hard copies of all these videos so that we can move them across to other sites as well when required. We've got a slide deck, which is what our um, videos are presented from. These are all just saved as Google Slides because it's nice and easy for people to access them. They can download them, they can look through them. Uh, they're all kind of a very clean and crisp design um, so that it's easy for people to, to use. We also baked in things for them like these teaching challenges, which is one of our ideas. So instead of just presenting people with information, we want to give them little challenges to get them to go out there and just try something. So in this case, it was to try and get people to go and use a tool called Learning Designer, where they can um, create their lesson designs and see uh, how that figures compared to um, the ABC Learning Design, which might be something, probably don't have real time to go into that right now, but um, we'd also created um, forums, which was just using a Google group. They didn't get as much traction as we'd hoped. Uh, Joe can talk more a bit about that in a second once I've finished doing this tour um, with helping our community to build and helping them to give someone to talk, but that didn't really happen in that particular instance. We also uh, created playlists of videos from YouTube on the topic. So again, this idea of not reinventing the wheel, grabbing what's out there and highlighting it to people so they can reuse it. And then we'd have a selection of resources based on the topic. So again, linking people out to other places where they can find information. So uh, things like the MIT Open Courseware, a great resource that a lot of people aren't aware of at a lecturing level. Um, and then further resources where we really go down into the nitty gritty and people can find what they want. And all this is then backed up by, we've got uh, full academic references as well for people who wanted to kind of uh, dig into some of the things where we've got some, like our learning design pedagogy from and all like this. Um, one of the other key parts of it was getting people to sign up to our community, which is in the form of ambassadors, which we just created a very simple um, form for them to sign up. They, we would then create uh, an account on our G Suite for them so they could then um, share stuff between each other more securely. Joe, do you want to talk more a bit about the ambassador side of things? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so again, back to I told you about that industrial action and that slowed the, the, the whole process. So we're at the stage now with ambassadors. We're moving that bit forward with Strathclyde University and NMIS. So we've got a, we've got we've got a, we've got more money, which is great uh, to, to, to extend our work. Uh, the, the idea with the ambassadors, we were going to reach a, a very large number of staff, which 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 we did, uh, mainly STEM and engineering staff across, across all of the colleges and the universities. But the ambassadors were going to have a special VIP offer, and that special that special VIP offer, I'll, I'll jump over and I'll share the screen now as well. That 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 VIP offer was to give them access to the back end of the the Google site. So that they could they could upload and they could share resources, and we haven't quite got to that bit. We've got lots of people who are keen to do it, but nobody quite done it yet. So we're just at that stage where we've engaged the audience, and we're just about to start doing that last bit. Uh, and I'll just I'll just try and share what what we've got at the back end. Give me a second. Well, Joe's getting that up. We also organised quite a lot of uh, teach meets in uh, three different cities in in Scotland, Edinburgh, Glasgow, and Aberdeen. Uh, which we had quite a lot of um, uptake for and people were really keen to get involved and meet people from different institutions and find a way of collaborating because it's just it's not an easy thing for them to do because they're all stuck in their own institutional version of Moodle or you know Office 365 where a lot of them are locked down and they can't share even a simple document with each other if it's you know bigger than their email sizes. You want me to share it Joe, you having trouble there? Hold on. Yeah, I think I'm having trouble. I'm not getting into the back end just now. Sorry, I thought I had. Wait a minute, application window. Hold on. No, I'm not. Lewis, can you have a quick go at it? Yeah, I'll share no, it again. I'll talk, as, Lewis, as, as Lewis is doing that, I'll, I'll talk you through. So the original intention was that we were going to make all of the resources open. And we were, and again, this is just quite interesting. We, we worked in partnership with Edinburgh, uh, with Edinburgh University as well around giving people a high level 
slide deck around the changes that are happening with Industry 4.0. So we've got all of that, and we've got that as an offer for the ambassadors. And the ambassadors have been downloading it, but not uploading things. Uh, but Edinburgh University, did, Edinburgh University, although they are champions of open, uh, they, they, they were worried about making the slide open and I'm guessing I'm guessing because you know again it's that bit of teaching and learning there are some images and some things that using your teaching and learning that you can't really put in the open web so I'm guessing there's some bits and pieces in here uh, some diagrams some other other stuff uh, that's okay for the educational community but can't go on the open 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 web but what we're encouraging people to do is, is to do as we've done uh, and, and check uh, all your images and all your all, all your resources, so you can put them out in the open web. You know, as as Lewis is 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 sweeping through that, I'm guessing perhaps that map and some of the other things might might not be on the on the open uh, on the open web. Uh, so that's why they're they're kind of restricted to that educational community. Yeah, we have also set so up. That, so that, that's that's through. really. That... Sorry, Joe. Go ahead. No, oh, Lewis, okay. go. I was just going to say, so these are all done through just shared drives in Google, where basically when someone signs up as an ambassador, we give them an account on our G Suite. So it's kind of a walled garden, you can kind of think of it as. And then I add them to an ambassadors group, and then we can share these um, drives with all of the ambassadors. Uh, we do have a, a file sharing area. I won't go into that because I, I don't know if there's anything in there that the ambassadors only want to share with each other and don't want to show into a wider community. So I just want to open that up just for data um security reasons um but you know these are, are kind of resources that i could show easily so they do have an area where they can upload files and try and share them through that way and it's kind of it's almost like that idea of, of baby steps really we're dealing with people who um haven't really done any form of online collaboration before and we're trying to make it as simple and easy for them to work cross institutionally um and be able to share anything at all really um so it's it's kind of uh yeah one one step at a time, trying to take it slow with them. So we are hoping to have. Well, we were going to be having more teach meets and stuff before this whole crisis hit, um, where we could do more in person things with them, so we can get them used to it and then introduce these tools to them and get them working more online. But again, it is uh, dealing with skill, a very very varied skill level of of um, ambassadors. Yeah, I mean, you, again, we're coming up to a few minutes left, Joe. Okay, and... so just the last bit. I mean, again. Just to reiterate, we're we're dealing we're dealing with with colleagues who aren't that confident about you know if you look at the the kind of the the, the main interventions in NMIS about doing digital assessment or, or or webinars and putting things online all of these things they're just not confident with these kind of things and where they do share things they they say things like oh I shared it I put it into our VLE and you're thinking well that's only sharing with your institution so. We're giving them skills, and we're also giving them a platform, giving them a place uh, where they can really share things with a community, and they can share things in the open space. Uh, or if they're worried about sharing in the open space, they can become an ambassador and just share it with their peers in the in that closed space. And, and that's really the story of any 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 MIS. Uh, and the the big centre is actually being built just now as we speak out near Glasgow Airport. But the ambition is, well, it's a physical space. It's this distributed learning space, uh, and that's what we've been supporting. And what we're fortunate in is we've got more money to continue supporting it. And and this model that we've created, uh, the model that other 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 educational bodies has been in, in, interested in, in in adopting too. So we're likely to do some other projects. We've, we've got one just now that Lewis and I are working on with the construction industry that's following quite quite a similar model. And thank you. Lewis, do you want thank to you. say anything else? No, just th thanks for coming along. <laughs> oh, that's that was really great. Thanks, guys. Sorry, I hate having to do this.